ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وشر العمور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد my brothers and sisters welcoming you بارك الله فيكم to these series of lectures regarding the warathatul anbiya or the inheritors of the prophets and in particular those great scholars of this era there is no doubt my brothers and sisters just as a brief muqaddima or a brief introduction to the subject matter that the ulama of al-islam from the time of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam up until this era that they are for us a reference point and a returning point for our affairs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned them in the Quran in numerous places the ulama ahlul ilm he has described them as rasikhun that those individuals who know the ta'wil of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah describes them and refers to them that none knows the meanings of them except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rasikhun fil ilm meaning those individuals who are well grounded and firmly established upon knowledge Likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in his book with regard to who are the ones that we refer back to for those affairs that we do not have knowledge of fasalu ahla dhikr in kuntum la ta'lamun ask the people of knowledge if you do not know so the scholars are individuals my brothers and sisters that we have been obligated by the kitab and the sunna by the ahadith of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we return our affairs back to them due to the nobility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the excellence that Allah jalla wa ala has given to ilm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in his book hal yastawi alladhina ya'lamuna wal ladhina la ya'lamun is it the case say to them o oh muhammad is it the case that those who know are equal to those who do not know so it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made a distinction between those who know and those who do not know so much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has drawn upon the ulama as witnesses to his tawhid or to his uh, single being singled out his wahdaniya or his singling out to be worshiped alone that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in his book shahid allah annahu la ilaha illa huwa wal wal malaikatu wa ulul ilm qa'iman bil qist la ilaha illa huwa huwa illa huwa al azizul hakim that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that allah bears witness that there is nothing which has a right to be worshiped but he except for him alone and then allah mentions the malaika also that they bear witness to that then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions ulul ilm the ulama the people of knowledge that they also bear witness so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions himself the angels and the ulama they are the ones who bear witness to the tawhid of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Why because the people of knowledge my brothers and sisters have a station Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned in a hadith that is authentic to him that the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam as Abu Umama Al-Bahili radiyallahu anhu said dhukira li rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rajulan that there were two men that were mentioned to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ahaduhuma abidun One of them was a worshipper. He used to worship Allah, establish the prayer, pay the zakat, perform the salat, perform the fasting in the month of Ramadan, pray in congregation, and the rest of the things that the abid and the worshipper of Allah does. Wal akharu and the other one alimun that he is a scholar. Faqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fadlul alim ala al-abid ka fadli ala adnakum. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the excellence of a scholar over the worshipper is like my excellence over the most lowly from amongst you and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned that indeed the malaika 
وأهل السماوات والأرضين that anything and all of the inhabitants rather in the heavens and in the earths in all of the heavens and in all of the earths that they seek forgiveness for the alim for the person of knowledge that even the ant in its nests or the ants in their nests that they seek that they seek forgiveness for the alim well and likewise he mentioned that even the fish in the sea seeks forgiveness for the alim in a narration the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah and the angels and the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth and even the ants and the fish in the oceans that all of them that they send the salutations and they pray for the person who teaches the people goodness so there is no doubt of the fadl of the alim The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that indeed the scholar he does not leave behind as inheritance dinaran wala dirhama he does not leave behind as inheritance no money no dinar no dirham no currency but rather what he leaves behind as inheritance is ilm is knowledge and whomsoever takes a portion of that knowledge of that inheritance of the anbiya and the rusul the prophets and the messengers of knowledge then indeed he has taken a great treasure So what the anbiya leave behind is a treasure who takes that treasure who takes that inheritance without doubt is it is the ulama it is the ulama so the ulama are to be honored because they have taken that which the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left behind and then they conveyed it to their nations Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned in his rad al jahmiya wal zanadiqa He mentions towards the beginning of this excellent treatise this great Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal he mentions that between the time periods of the prophets and the messengers between one prophet and another prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises men ulama these are individuals who guide the misguided to guidance these are the individuals who illuminate and give sight to the blind by the permission of Allah With regard to that meaning using the book of Allah they give sight to the blind and then he mentions how many a people that have been killed by iblis their hearts have been killed by iblis have they revived and given life to who the ulama of al islam by the permission of Allah and how wicked the people are to them how wicked they are and how patient these scholars have been towards the people it is not permissible my brothers and sisters to speak against the ulama the ulama of sunnah the ulama of the salaf the ulama of salafiyyah the ulama of, of al hadith the ulama my brothers and sisters those who are treated with wickedness and evil they are the ones who are turned away they are the ones who are abused but they remain patient as the anbiya and the rusul that they were patient with the harm that came upon them it is an obligation to love them It is an obligation to ally oneself with them. The great Imam Abu Uthman Ismail As-Sabuni rahimahullah ta'ala the great Imam who died in the 4th century. He said wa ihda alamati ahli sunnah hubbuhum li a'immati sunnah from the from one of the signs and the distinguishing signs of the people of sunnah is their love for the scholars of the sunnah they love for the imams of the sunnah wa ulama'iha and to love their learned men and their scholars wa ansariha and to have love for those who aid the scholars wa awliya'iha and likewise to love the those who befriend and the allies of the scholars wa bughduhum li a'immati al-bid'a and from the signs of ahlu sunnati wal jamaa is their hatred harsh words but words that the great imams were upon of the earlier generations wa bughduhum li a'immati al bid'a and their hatred from the signs of ahlu sunna is their hatred of the imams of misguidance and bid'a alladhina yad'una ila an-nar 
those individuals who call to the gates of the hellfire. The Prophet of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sent in a hadith which is authentic from him, collected by Imam Tirmidhi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the thing that I fear most for my ummah are the imams of misguidance. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when he was explained to Hudayfa radiallahu anhu regarding individuals who will appear and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to describe them and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in various narrations collected by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he mentioned that a time will come a wicked and evil time he said that they will be called as du'at ala abwabi jahannam. That they will be callers upon the gates of the hellfire. Whomsoever answers their call, they will cast them into jahannam. Meaning the callers of hellfire will drag you with their ideologies, with their aqaid, with their beliefs, with their false beliefs. That they will drag you along with themselves to the hellfire. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu anhuma. He said to the Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, Sifhum lana, describe them to us. The Prophet Sallallahu said, They are from our people. Hum min jildatina. They are from our people. And they will speak with our language. Who are these individuals, my brothers and sisters? They are the a'imma of bid'ah and misguidance. Those who call to the denizens of the fire. And those who answer their call, they will end up in the hellfire with them. So who is the one who protects you by the permission of Allah from their calls of misguidance? It is the ones whom Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal has described. They are the ones who give sight to the blind by way of the book of Allah and the sunnah of Allah's messenger. They are those individuals who give life to the hearts that have been killed by Iblis by the permission of Allah by way of the book and the sunnah. They are the ulama. They are the likes of those great a'imma from the sahaba. The sahaba radiallahu anhum. The greater of them. And those who followed after them. Those who have virtue with them. And all of the sahaba, they have virtue. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Umar ibn al-Khattab. Uthman bin Affan. Ali ibn Abi Talib. Abu Huraira. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah ibn Umar. Aisha radiallahu anha, Um Salama, all of these Sahaba radiallahu anhum, male and female, that they are for us an example to be followed. As Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal said, Wal iqtida'u bihim wa tarkul bid'a, taking them as an example to be followed and to leave alone innovation. These two terms come together, ya ikhwan, to, f- to follow their example. And to follow their example necessitates leaving alone innovations and misguidance, additions and accretions that are added to the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And then those who took from them, the likes of Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib, who died in the year 94 after the Hijrah, who took directly from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. The likes of Al-Hassan al-Basri, who died in the year 110, directly from the Sahaba. Muhammad ibn Sirin, Abu al-Aliya died in the year 90 after the Hijrah. These a'imma who took and they sat at the feet of the Sahaba. Some of those tabi'een, the likes of al-Hassan al-Basri, that as children, as babies, they were held in the hands of the Sahaba. Um Salama radiallahu anha, she used to hold Hassan al-Basri in her hands because the mother of al-Hassan al-Basri was the, ser- was the servant of Um Salama in the house of prophethood after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Al-Hassan al-Basri was raised as a child running around the feet of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. He sat at the age of 8 and 9 and 10 in the khutb and in the sermons of Uthman radiallahu anhu. Ulama ya ikhwan. And then they, after them they came the likes of Imam al-Zuhri died in the year 124. And they after came the likes of Sufyan al-Thawri and the likes of Imam al-Awza'i who came in the generation that came after the Tabi'een, the Atba'u Tabi'een. Imam al-Zuhri died in the year 124. Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani, 131. Atba'u Tabi'een nurtured the hands of the Tabi'een. And then those who were from the younger from amongst them, 
but still mighty in knowledge. Sufyan al-Thawri 161, Awza'i 157, Imam Malik ibn Anas 179, Imam Shafi'i 204. Generation after generation, one alim or a group of ulama, generation after generation, taking from the taking from the generation or the tabaqa that came before them. The likes of Ahmed ibn Hanbal, 241. The likes of Ishaq ibn Rahawai, 238. The likes of Hamad ibn Salama, Hamad ibn Zayd. The likes of Imam al-Bukhari, 256. Imam al-Tirmidhi, 279. These ulama stretching generation after generation. And if you were to connect them together, you would see that one would take from the other, who would take from the other, up until you reach the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the likes of Imam Muslim, At-Tirmidhi, Al-Nasai, the A'immatul Hadith, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, these were the great Imams of that era. Ibn Khuzayma, Al-Barbahari, 329. And then the A'imma that came after that, from the same era, from that same period of time. Imam Al-Ajuri, Imam Al-Sabuni, entering into the 4th century. Al-Lalakai, entering into the 4th century. Entering into the 5th and the 6th century. Imam Al-Maqdisi, Abdul Ghani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And then thereafter, the likes of Imam Al-Nawawi, entering into the 6th century. Then into the 7th century, the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah, died 728. Ibn Qayyim, 752. And then in the next century, the likes of Ibn Hajar, Al-Asqalani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, died in the year 850 or, 850 or thereabouts. And then those ulama that, take, that took from them and came after them from the great A'immatul Islam in the 9th and the 10th centuries. And then into the 11th century, the likes of Imam al-Shawkani, and his, and likewise, Imam al-Shawkani, al-Yamani, rahimahullah ta'ala. Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab died in the year 1206. And then his children and his grandchildren, Suleiman bin Abdul Wahhab, bin Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, and his grandchildren, Hassan, and his great-grandchildren, the likes of Hassan bin Abdul Rahman bin Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, rahimahum Allah ta'ala jami'an, up until we reach into our times, the 13th century and the 14th century that we are presently in now, the 15th century. The likes of Imam Sa'di, Muhammad bin Ibrahim al Sheikh, these ulama of the generation that came before, the likes of Ibn Baz and Al Albani and Ibn Uthaymeen, who were nurtured. These were the scholars, the likes of Ahmed Shakir in Masr, the likes of Taqiyuddin al Hilali, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala that they nurtured the scholars of the generation that we are living in. Muhammad bin Shanqiti, rahimahullah, the author of the great tafsir, Adwa al-Bayan. These were the ulama, generation after generation after generation, up until the likes of our era. Al-Albani, Ibn Baz, Ibn Uthaymeen, Muqbil bin Hadi, Muhammad Aman, the ulama of this era, ya ikhwan, all of these that I've mentioned passed away. Ahmed and Najmi. And then likewise, my brothers and sisters, those who remain alive from amongst them. The likes of Sheikh Al-Fawzan, Sheikh Rabi'ah, Sheikh Ubaid, Sheikh Zayd Al-Madkhali, Mufti Abdul Aziz. These are the ulama of the era. If you were to connect them, just like you would connect your lineage to your father, then to his father, then to his father, then likewise with the ulama, you can connect them to the one that they took from, to the one that he took from, to the one that he took from, all the way back to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is an obligation to love them. And it is an obligation to hate those who deviate you away from their path. So do not be deviated and do not be misguided. Do not be from those individuals who say it doesn't matter who you take from. It matters. You wouldn't compare Bukhari to a person of innovation. You wouldn't take the hadith of Bukhari and compare them to anybody else that collects the hadith of Allah's messenger. There is a difference between this one and that one. There is a difference between the one who adheres to the sunnah, adheres to the manhaj of the salaf, and the one who takes from other than the manhaj of the salaf. And the ulama, and our adherence to them, and our love for them, is the affair that distinguishes us 
from the people of misguidance. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in his book, Yawma tabiyaddu wajuhun, on that day when some faces will be white, wa taswaddu wajuhun, and some faces will be black. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ سُوَدَّتْ وَجُوهُمْ أَكَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِمَانِكُمْ And as for those whose faces will be blackened upon that day, meaning يوم القيامة, it will be said to them, did you disbelieve after once believing? فَذُوقُوا الْأَذَابِ فَذُوقُوا الْأَذَابِ So taste the adab, taste the punishment, بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ Due to that which you used to disbelieve in. Abdullah ibn Abbas رحمه الله تعالى رضي الله عنهما and likewise Abdullah ibn Umar, and other than them from the Sahaba, they used to say that those whose faces will be blackened on the day of resurrection, they are Ahlul Bid'a and Ahlul Dalala. They are the people of Bid'a, people of misguidance, and people of separation. There is no doubt, my brothers and sisters, that from the most distinguishing signs of Ahlul Bid'a, is their hatred for Ahlul Sunnah and the scholars of Hadith. Ahmed bin Sinan al-Qattan, rahimahullah ta'ala from the great A'imma of the Salaf, he would say, Laysa fi dunya mubtadi'un. There is not in this world an innovator, a person of misguidance and bid'a, illa huwa yabghud, or yabghadu, Ahlul Hadith, except that he hates the scholars of Hadith. He hates the people of Hadith. And then he mentioned, so when a man innovates into the deen of Allah, then the sweetness of the Hadith of Allah's Messenger وسلم, is stripped from his heart. Is stripped from his heart. And it was the habit of the Salaf, or a group from the Salaf, that they never used to just say, love the people of Sunnah, love the people of Sunnah. Rather, they would take it a step further. And they would test the people. And they would say to them, What do you say about such and such? What do you say about Ahmed bin Hanbal? And if they showed love towards Ahmed bin Hanbal, then they would say, This is a man of Sunnah. If they would show love towards Imam al-Barbahari, they would say, This is a man of Sunnah. If they would show love towards Ibn Taymiyyah, then they would know that this is a man of Sunnah. If they would show love towards Sufyan of Thawri, they would show they would know that this is a man of Sunnah. So it is established as Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Muhammad bin Saleh, Al Uthaymeen from the great Imams of our era, who died approximately twelve or so years ago, Rahimahullah. That he mentioned that no doubt love of the Aimma of the Sunnah. Love of the A'imma to Sunnah, the Imams of the Sunnah. That a sign, that loving them is a sign of a person's love of the Sunnah itself. And he mentions that making imtihan, making imtihan, meaning testing the people, examining the people, by asking them, what do you say about such and such a scholar? By checking his love of them, that this is something that was established by the Salaf. So much so, that many of the scholars, they derive this even from certain ahadith of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa For example, in that which has been collected by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim, that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ayatul Iman, that a sign of Iman is hubbul ansar, is love of the ansar. This group of companions that were resident in Medina. A sign of a person's iman is his love of the Ansar. Wa ayatun nifaq. And a sign of his nifaq, of his hypocrisy. Bughdul Ansar. Is his hatred of the Ansar. Of the companions of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those who were already in Medina. So this is a proof. If you want to know. A person's iman, whether he is truly a person who is a believer, then you would know from his love of certain individuals. So our love of the Prophet ﷺ, our love of him is 
a distinguishing sign of the iman of a Muslim. His hatred of the Prophet ﷺ is a clear sign that he, this person is not a Muslim. Because he hates him. The love of Abu Bakr and Umar, radiallahu anhuma, the one who loves them is a believer. And the one who hates them, then this is a sign of his nifaq and his kufr and his hatred of the revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. So when a person comes along and he hates them and he hates these individuals whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to love, then that is a sign of his nifaq. So Sufyan al-Fawri rahimahullah ta'ala used to say, Imtahinu ahlul mawsil bil mu'afa bin Imran. He used to say, test the people of Mosul. This place, Mosul, is a place in Iraq. Test the people of that town with who? With Mu'afa bin Imran. With this scholar called Mu'afa bin Imran. Test them. Imam Al-Lalaka'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions that Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi from the great A'imma, from the era of Ahmed ibn Hanbal, and from the era of Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala. That he used to say, Ibn Aun, fil Basriyin. Test the people of Basra with Ibn Aun. Ask them if they come to you and they want to now show that they are people of Sunnah, ask them, what do you say about Ibn Aun? What do you say about Ibn Aun? Then he said, Ida ra'aytu ra, ra'ayta rajul, yuhibbuhu fatma in ilayhi. If you find that a person loves Ibn Aun, this great scholar Ibn Aun, if you know, if you find that a person loves him, then he mentioned, then be at ease. Feel tranquility with, your, with, with regard to him or with respect to him. وَفِي الْكُوفِيِينَ And as for the people of Kufa in Iraq, Malik bin Mighwal. Test them with Malik bin Mighwal. And likewise with Zaida ibn Qudama. The Zaida ibn Qudama, rahimahullah ta'ala, was from the greatest of the imams who was stern and mutashaddid. He had shidda, sternness towards the people of Bid'ah. So much so that he would not narrate even a hadith of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam to a person up until he had examined them, up until he had made imtihan. How would he say to them? He would say to them, what do you say about Qadr? What do you say about Qadr? Is, the, is fornication pre-decreed? He would test them to make sure that they were not Qadariyah. And he would not narrate a hadith of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to a person of Bid'ah up until they affirmed that they were people of Sunnah. Zaida ibn Qudama Rahimahullah Ta'ala So what does he say? Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi from the teachers of Imam al-Bukhari from those who Imam al-Bukhari narrates from. This Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi said, test the people of Kufa with Malik bin Mighwal and with Zaida ibn Qudama. And then he said, if you find a person loving them, if you find a person loving him, then there is hope for his goodness. Loving who? Loving Zaida ibn Qudama and Malik bin Mighwal. Then he mentioned, وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الشَّامِ Al-Awza'i. And as for the people of Syria, then test them with Awza'i. Which century are we talking about? Don't be confused, ya ikhwan. We are talking about the first century. Imam Al-Awza'i died in the year 157. He's telling the people of that time, so close they are to the Sahaba. But Bid'a began to spread. Deviation began to spread. So how do you know who's who? How do you know now who the people are? Who are the people of Sunnah? Who do I mix with? Who do I send my children to? Who do I talk to? Who do I walk with? Who do I have to be careful of? How do I know? We use signposts. We use signs. What are those signs? The ulama. So the people of Sham, he used to say, test them. With who? Al-Awza'i. Test them with Imam Al-Awza'i. Imam Al-Awza'i. And likewise with Abu Ishaq al-Fazari. Another scholar who was mutashaddid against people of Bid'a. Harsh towards them. That he used to say, ask them. Why? Because the general folk, 
and the people of bid'ah, the people of misguidance, who are the first people that they will hate? Those who are harsh against them. Of course, that's why they hated Ahmed bin Hanbal. Rahimahullah ta'ala. But Ahmed bin Hanbal was distinguished. He was distinguished with knowledge, with hadith, with aqeedah, with fiqh, with warah, with piety. With all of these affairs, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal was distinguished. Not only him and his brothers as well from those who came before him. Al-Shafi'i, Sufyan al-Thawri, Imam al-Awza'i, Imam al-Zuhri, Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani. All of them distinguished. And they were particular individuals who were distinguished because of the war that they initiated against the people of misguidance who were leading the innocent people and the general focus straight. So they became targets of attack from the people of Bid'ah. So they would make Turkeys that they would focus upon certain individuals to attack. Who would they attack? Ahmed bin Hanbal. Who would they attack? Al-Barbahari. Who would they attack? Sufyan al-Thawri. Who would they attack? Fudayl ibn Iyad. Certain characters and certain individuals, they would specify for hatred and enmity. They would drag them in front of the rulers, lie to the rulers and get these scholars beaten and imprisoned. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah died in prison. Not because he rebelled against the ruler, because of the politics of the ruler. Nothing to do with that. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah who died in the year 728 after Hijrah, he was in prison because of the plotting of the Sufis. And the Ash'aris and the Jahmiyyah, those individuals plotted against him. Why? Because he passed a fatwa against visiting the graves of the awliya and seeking from them. So this is why he was imprisoned. Not because he said the rulers don't judge by what Allah has revealed. Not because he said they are kings and they are in palaces, they are living in palaces whilst we are suffering. Not because of that. So these ulama, in certain periods and certain times, that they are attacked and they are, vind- and they are victimized and the general folk are warned against them. So those scholars, that they are used as a, le- as a point of imtihan for the people, they are used. Ahmed bin Hanbal, Sufyan al-Thawri, al-Awza'i, they are used. Abu Ishaq al-Fazari, Za'idah ibn Qudama. Why are they used? Because these scholars are distinguished for their rudud and their enmity and their exposing of the people of Bid'ah. So they are used as signs, as markers, as signposts and other than them. And then he mentioned, وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْحِجَازِ And as for, this, as for the people of Hijaz, look, he's covered one side of Iraq, then another side of Iraq, then Syria. Now he's saying, now what about the people of Mecca and Medina of the Hijaz? He says, as for the people of Hijaz, then test them with Malik bin Anas. Test them with Imam Malik ibn Anas. And I can bring you narration after narration after narration, ya ikhwan, with regard to this affair that the scholars and one's attachment and love for them, that he distinguishes a person of Sunnah from the person of Bid'ah. But I'm just going to finish upon the statement of Qutayba bin Sa'id, rahimahullah ta'ala. Qutayba bin Sa'id, he said, إِذَا رَأَيْتُ, إذا رأيت رَجُلُ يُحِبُّ أَهْلُ الْحَدِيثِ If you find a person who loves the people of hadith, who are the people of hadith? It is not Green Lane Musk. Get this out of your head. Nor is it their factions and their branches up and down the country. Labeling yourself with something does not make you that person. Tayr al-Qadri, this person who commits shirk openly and publicly. People, he brings them to himself and he makes them, in front of him, they make sajda before him. What does he say? He says, I am from Ahlu Sunnah. And, our, and what, is it, what is his group called? You know what he's called? Minhaj al-Quran. Is he upon the Minhaj al-Quran? So using a title and attaching yourself to it does not mean that you reflect the reality of that title. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions in Madarij al-Salikin. He mentions changing the name of something does not change its reality. Taking a label and putting it upon something does not mean that that thing has become that. So if I rip off the label of a bottle of beer, 
And then I take a, take a bottle of milk and I take that label off and I swap them over. Does the milk become beer and the beer become milk and you pour it upon your cornflakes? And then when someone asks you, are you Majnoon, what are you doing? He said what well, he said, milk on the bottle. No one would do that. No one would accept that. And that's in your dunya. So what about in your deen? As Muhammad ibn Sirin said, Inna hadha al-ilm deenun. Indeed, this knowledge is religion. So look to whom you take your knowledge. Changing something and changing its name. So those people, alhamdulillah, anyway, they are called GLM. Right? They don't call themselves Ahlul Hadith anymore. Which is good. Because they are not deserving of the label Ahlul Hadith. When we say Ahlul Hadith, we are not talking about a specific jam'iya, a specific organization that has members, that has all of this hizbiya and tahazzub and partisanship around it. When we are talking about Ahlul Hadith, we are talking about Bukhari, Malik ibn Anas, Ahmed bin Hanbal, Imam Shafi'i, At-Tirmidhi, Imam Muslim. This is what we mean by Ahlul Hadith. They were not part of any jam'iyyah that was set up in the United Kingdom. So changing and giving yourself a title does not mean that you are from those people. So he mentioned Qutayba bin Sa'id rahimahullah ta'ala from the early salah, from the second century. He said, if you see a man loving Ahlul Hadith, now he's going to tell you who are Ahlul Hadith. He mentions the likes of Yahya bin Sa'id, Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, Ahmed bin Muhammad bin Hanbal, Ishaq bin Rahawayn, and then he mentioned other names from the 2nd and 3rd century. فَإِنَّهُ عَلَى السُنَّةِ If you find a man loving them, these are examples of Ahlul Hadith. The people and the scholars of Hadith. If you find a man loving them, he mentions, فَإِنَّهُ عَلَى السُنَّةِ Then he is upon the Sunnah. وَمَنْ خَالَفَ هَؤُلَاءِ And if he opposes these individuals, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ مُبْتَدِعٌ Then know that he is an innovator. A person of misguidance. Clear, ya ikhwan. And now the people say, so if I don't love Bin Baz, I'm not a Salafi. No, you're not a Salafi. What do you want me to say? Lie to you? If I don't love Ibn Uthaymin, I'm not Salafi. No, you're not Salafi. If I don't love Mukmil bin Hadi, I'm not Salafi. No, you're not Salafi. I don't love Al Albani, I'm not Salafi. No, you're not Salafi. And they say, look at these, look at these Wahhabis, look at these Salafis. They make haq and batil around ashkhas. No. We don't make haq in a particular issue, in a particular mas'ala around an individual. But we make love of that individual a distinguishing sign of your sunnah. It is possible that al-albani can err in a mas'ala. Rahimahullah. And bin Baz can. And I will err a hundred times more than them. But one thing that is for sure that they were upon the tariqah al-salafiyyah, manhaj al-salafi, aqeedah al-salafiyyah. This is their manhaj, their aqeedah, their principles. There were no mistakes in that, ya ikhwan. Why? Because their principles and their fundamentals and their qawaid and their usul were that of the sahaba radiallahu anhum. Even though they may have erred in one or two masail from the affairs of ijtihad, from the affairs of nawazil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even rewards the alim who is mistaken for his ishtihad, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith. But nevertheless, ya ikhwan, yes, we say, if you love al-Albani, bin Baz, ibn Uthaymin, Muqbil, Muhammad Aman, if you love Rabi bin Hadi, and you love the likes of Ahmed al-Najmi, Abdullah Ghudayan, then this is a sign that you are a man of sunnah. If you hate them, then we say, Annaka mubtadi'un. That you are a mubtadi', you are an innovator. Right? Unless he is ignorant. He is a person who is jahil. He doesn't know. Then he should be taught, as Shaykh al-Albani said. And that we do not race towards tabdi'. But if he is a person who knowingly, after the affair has been made clear to him, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ رَسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى that the one who contends with the messenger after the huda, after the guns has been made clear to him. 
then this was the one who is the one as the Prophet Sallallahu said and he opposes the path of the companions then Allah will leave him and burn him in the hellfire who the one who after the proof comes to him so now he is told you can't speak against Al-Albani you can't speak against Ibn Taymiyyah Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Ibn Baz Rabi al-Madkhali why? because these are from the signposts of the sunnah if you do not love them then who do you love? Qardawi you love Qardawi the one who says that our dispute between the Jews has got nothing to do with religion nothing to do with belief we just want the land is this what the messenger fought for? That, we, that our dispute with them is not over aqidah. Why? Because he says that the Jews and Christians, they are believers, they are mu'minun. So someone asked him, no, 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 Sheikh. Maybe you're just saying that because you know that people are watching you. He said, no. This is what we believe. They are our, belie- they are our believing brothers, the Jews and the Christians. The same one who said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down and he stood in the elections in Israel, against Benjamin Netanyahu, then Allah would be defeated. This is Qardawi. This Qardawi who says that the hijab, that the woman, that her hijab is something limited and it is something, there's no jilbab, there's no none of this hijab. He doesn't believe in it. Not in the correct fashion anyway. He makes music halal. He has a book called Al-Halal Wal Haram. Otherwise known as Al-Halal Wal-Halal. Because there is nothing haram to him. He is Ash'ari in Aqeedah. He is Ash'ari in Aqeedah denying the Sifat. Oh, these are the scholars. So if you don't love Bin Baz, Al-Albani, Ibn Uthaymeen, Rabi Al-Madkhali, Muqbil Bin Hadi. So if these aren't your scholars, then who are your scholars? These, in, these individuals who are the callers to the gates of Jahannam? We need to know our scholars just like in the olden days. They needed to know who is Ahmed, who is Shafi'i, who is Malik, who is Sufyan, who is Fudail. Who are they? Likewise, today we have their equivalents in our time. Meaning, the equivalents of this era in our time. And we should know them. From them, of course, as the subject matter of today, Dars explains to you, from them is Sheikh Rabia bin Hadi al-Madkhali. In these times, my brothers and sisters, as you know, and as I've clarified, that we see numerous jama'at and sects, widespread, multiplicity of parties. We see between them, between each of the groups, hatred and enmity one for another. Every group hating the other group. How does a person distinguish each of those groups calling to its own defined manhaj that it has written for itself? Jumat al has its own aqidah and its own methodology that he wrote for itself. From the school of the Yoband, established in 1865. So the founder of Jumat al Muhammad Ilyas al-Kandalawi, or Kandahlawi, who died in the year 1945 of the Christian calendar, that he was the founder of Jumat al He codified for them their madhab and their beliefs. And how they work and how they operate in contradiction to the Kitab and the Sunnah. Jamaat Ikhwan al Muslimin, they found a Hassan al Banna from their greatest of leaders, Sayyid Qutb. These individuals found these groups. Hizb al Tahrir, founded by Taqidin uh, al Nabahani, the Syrian, died in the year, I think, 1979 or thereabouts. Jamaat Islami. Of Pakistan, founded by Say- Sayyid or Sayyid Ala Abu Ala Al Maududi, died in the year 1979. So all of these jama'at have become whites. Each of them claiming that it is upon the haq. Each of them, each of them calling to their own path, to their own defined constitutions, that which they have written for themselves, these qawaneen and these dustur and these constitutions that they have for their own group. That does not allow anybody else from other groups to come and infiltrate them. So they have protective measures around them. So now, Jamaat al Tabligh will not change what it's upon. Ikhwan al Muslimin will not change what it's upon. Each of them calling to its way. 
What did the Prophet sallallahu say to Hudayfa when Hudayfa said, Ya Rasulullah, what do you advise me with? When this sectarianism becomes widespread and these firaq become widespread, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, then abandon all of them. Abandon all of the firaq. Even if you have to bite onto the roots of the tree and death reaches you in that state. So we are living in those times. In these times that individuals have become famous due to the fact that they are callers to political activism. So they call to their politics. Or they are good at speech. Or they are eloquent. Or they can fill auditoriums. Or they deceive the people. Like Yasir Qadi, Yusuf Estes, sitting there deceiving the people, speaking with language that attracts the desires of the people. Nothing to do with revelation. So the people are de- deceived by them. Those individuals like Yasir Qadi who justify cooperation with those who worship other than Allah. Those who go to the graves and go to the qubur. So this has become widespread in our times. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like he has done in every era between the prophets and between the messengers, Allah raises ulama, ulama who, who stand up and that they bring the aql, the uqul of the shabab, that they bring them to a better understanding of the deen. So these ulama, they stand and they say, leave all of these jama'at, leave all of these sects, Go back to the Quran and the Sunnah and the Sahaba. Go back to the writings of Malik ibn Anas, Sufyan al Thawri, Imam al Lalakai, Ahmed bin Hanbal, al Shafi'i. Go back to what they were saying. Go back to Ibn Batta. Go back to Ibn Khuzayma. Go back to those writings of those A'imma of the early generations and you will know what you're supposed to be upon. So these ulama, they stand up and they stand. And they call the shabab, they call the youth to that which is the haq. And straight away, what happens? Now those people who have vested interests in their groups and their parties, that they pick out those ulama that stand. Al-Albani, Muqbil bin Hadi, Sheikh Rabi al-Madkhali, Ahmed al-Najmi, al-Fawzan, that they recognize and they pick them out. Who? These deviated sects. And they single them out for attack and revilement and propaganda against them. And they speak against them. And all of these scholars have done in reality is teach the people go back to the asal. Go back to the origin of the call. Go back to the writings of those ulama. Why are you reading books that were written 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Why are you reading the tafsir, for example, of Sayyid Qutub and Al-Mawdudi? Why are you reading the tafsir that is based upon the writings of Alexis Carroll, the French philosopher? These are the writings of Sayyid Qutb. They're not rooted in the teachings of the Salaf. The tafsir of Sayyid Qutb is based upon prevailing circumstances of politics in his time. Upon the ideas of Karl Marx. Upon the ideas of Alexis Carroll. Upon the ideas of the revolutionaries of the West, the likes of Stalin and Lenin. Even the kuffar. Even the kuffar academics, when the writings of Sayyid Qutb, such as Milestones, was translated into English, they started studying Milestones. Ma'alim fit tariq of Sayyid Qutb. What did they say? Kuffar. They said that when we read Milestones, it is as if we were reading the writings of Lenin. The Bolshevik revolutionary that brought in the current communist state of Russia. In, the 19, in 1918 and thereafter. Even they recognized. But yet the writings of Sayyid Qutb and the tafsir of Sayyid Qutb is seen as a, as a tafsir that should be read. So the likes of Sheikh Rabia and his brothers from the Sunnah, they said, no, we will not allow our youth to be misguided. We will stand up. We will teach them the Sunnah. We will teach them the way of the Sahaba. And we will teach them not to follow the writings of those people who are the du'at ala abwabi jahannam. Who are the callers upon the gates of jahannam. So, the shabab when they are, or when the youth, when propaganda is spread against the scholars. So the youth, they abandon the gatherings of the ulama. They abandon the gatherings of the scholars. Those who defend the sunnah 
of Al-Mustafa, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They abandon the gatherings of those who take from the scholars. Those gatherings where the slogans and the deeds and the deviations and the innovations of the callers to Hizbiya are exposed. So what do those people of misguidance tell them? What does Yasir Qadi tell them? What does Abu Usama, Khalifa, what does he tell them? Don't go to their gatherings. Why? Because these people that they will refute. They don't want you to hear the refutations. Why? Because when you hear who is upon falsehood and who is upon haq and you can distinguish and you have a furqan, you have a distinguishing criterion that tells you the difference between truth and falsehood, you will abandon them. And you will stop putting money into their coffers. You will stop donating to them. Then they will go out of business. When they go out of business, their dawah is dead. They do not want you to go and sit with the likes of Sheikh Rabia. Or with the likes of Sheikh Al-Fawzan. Or with the likes of Muqbil bin Hadi or Ahmed the Najmi or Zayd Al-Madkhali. In our early years of the da- da'wah, from the first things that were said to us, be careful of Al-Albani. First things, they said, be careful of Al-Albani. Be careful of Al-Albani. To me, it had the opposite effect. I want to know what he's about. You're telling me to keep away from him. Now I want to know what Al-Albani is about. And that was in the late 80s. They said, be careful of Bin Baz. He's a government scholar. That made me want to know what is this man about? The more I read, the more I pondered, the more I investigated into the life of Bin Baz, Al-Albani, Ibn Uthaymeen. Wallahi, the more that I realized these are the Ahmed bin Hanbals of this time. These are the Yahya bin Ma'ins of this time. This is what they are. So from them was the great scholar Sheikh Rabia. So when they attacked, and they attacked for a purpose, so now you find ignorant youth who flee from the likes of Sheikh Rabia. Why? Because of this propaganda. Have they read the books of Sheikh Rabi'ah? No. Have they, ascended the, have they attended the durus of Sheikh Rabi'ah? No. Have they even seen the face of Sheikh Rabi'ah? No. Have they, learned the, have they heard the cassettes of Sheikh Rabi'ah? No. Have they read Manhaj al-Anbiya fi da'wah ila Allah? Which was a book that was praised by the scholars unanimously from the kibar ulama. And it has been translated, translated by our brother Abu Dawood, Abu Talha Dawood. Rahimahullah ta'ala. The methodology of the prophets in calling to Allah of Shaykh Rabia. Bin Baz praised it. Fawzan wrote an introduction to it. Ibn Uthaymeen praised it. The scholars of the era praised Shaykh Rabi for this book. Have they read it? They haven't read it. Those Hizbiyun published the book, but they don't act upon the book. They took the book and they published it. Yet they don't act upon what's in that book of Sheikh Rabia. Wallahi ya ikhwan. This is a dilemma for the shabab and for the youth who walk around upon this earth blind because they don't want to open their eyes because they're too busy listening to the slogans of Ahlul Bid'ah. So this scholar, just like the scholars who came before him, Sheikh Rabia, has become a trial and a mehna for Ahlul Bid'ah. There is not a mubtadiya. There is not an innovator in the dunya except that he hates Sheikh Rabia. Not one. The Shia, they hate him. The Mu'tazila, they hate him. The Tablighis, they hate him. The Ikhwanis, they hate him. The Tahriris, they hate him. The FIS, they hate him. The GIA, they hate him. Jamaat Islami, they hate him. The Sufis, they hate him. The Naqshbandis, they hate him. The Brailwis, they hate him. The Qutubis, they hate him. Ihya Turath, hate him. The Hizbis, hate him. Jam'iyata, this Jam'iyat of Green Lane, they dislike him and dispraise him and they hate him. There is not a person of Hawa except that he hates Sheikh Rabia. Just like they hated Al Albani. Just like they hated Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i. Just like they hated them. Just like they hated Barbahari. Just like they hated Ibn Taymiyyah and Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. Just like that, they hate Sheikh Rabia. Have they read his books? No. 
Have they heard his lectures? No. Have they attended the Duros? No. Even one Dars? No. They won't go to it. And they will not advise others to go to it. Yet they themselves are ignorant. They would sit there and listen to Bilal Phillips. But they will not listen to Sheikh Rabia. Is that ajib, ya ikhwan, min al ajaib? From the strangest of affairs, that you will listen to an ikhwani qutubi upon the manhaj of ikhwan and qutubiya who praises Safar al Hawali, Salman al Awda, praises the khawarij of this era, praises ikhwan al Muslimin, regards the likes of Hassan al Banna to be from the mujaddideen of this era, from the revivers of this era. They will sit with him, invite him to their masjid. But when it comes to Sheikh Rabi, no, no, no. Let's not sit with Sheikh Rabi. Why? Where's his bid'ah? Where is the bid'ah of Sheikh Rabi? Show it to us. Where is the inhiraf of Sheikh Rabi? The man is 80 years old and more. Sheikh Rabi, you have 80 years to choose from. In fact, Sheikh Rabi said, please. He said, please go to my books and go to my tapes and find my mistakes. Please, because I don't want to die with those mistakes. I want to rectify them before I die. So if you find them, tell me so I can make tawbah. So find the mistakes of Sheikh Rabi then. Don't tell me, Qil wa qal, Fulan said, and this one said, and that one said. That fool in Green Lane said, Abu Usama, about Sheikh Rabi. We don't want to know about that, what he said or he said. Bring us the evidence against Sheikh Rabi. Bring us the evidence. You will sit with Abu Usama, Khalifa, this American renegade. You will sit with him for 10 years and the man belittles Abu Bakr, curses Walid ibn Uqba, curses the rulers of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, bordering onto takfir, if not takfir. Attack Sheikh Muqbil. Speaks against the scholars. Makes tabdir. Declares the Ahlu Sunnah to be innovators. This individual, you will sit with him. And when it comes to Sheikh Rabi, you won't sit. How is that possible, Ya Ikhwan? So let us know about Sheikh Rabi. Who is Sheikh Rabi? Sheikh Rabi, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, Bin Hadi, Umair al-Madkhali, was the formerly the head of the department of Sunnah at the Islamic University of Medina. So he was head, head of department. Before he retired. We know that he has authored many, many books, Ya Ikhwan. Many books. And treaties in aid of the religion. Books based upon knowledge. His majmu'a, his majmu'a kutub wa rasail wal wal fatawa, his majmu, kutub, wa rasail, wa fatawa, alone is 15 volumes. Many of his books are in there because it is a collection of his works. He is from those who is ardent and steadfast upon the minhaj of the prophetic da'wah. Spreading of tawheed, the tawheed of Allah in his worship and servitude. Rather, he is from the most jealous of all of mankind alive today. Him, and his brothers from the scholars, they are jealous of this Tawheed. So jealous that they, that they hate it being violated. They cannot sit whilst the Tawheed of Allah is being attacked. This is why Shaykh Rabi has so many rasail and works against those who contradict the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Rabi cannot sleep when he knows that there are people out there opposing the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has not rectified them and warned the people from them, and brought them the correct position. This is Sheikh Rabia. He is a caller to the Sunnah, holds fast to the Sunnah, waging war upon that which opposes the Sunnah, wages war against Bid'ah, wages war against Shirk. He has spent vast amounts of time and effort with the students of knowledge. And you see them all over the dunya, the students and the fruits of Sheikh Rabia. All over the dunya, ya ikhwan. And they are predominantly people who are grounded in knowledge. Not juhal. Predominantly, those who have taken from Sheikh Rabi are grounded in ilm, grounded in knowledge, grounded in manhaj. So he advises them. He calls them, directs them, clarifies to them the correct path, 
the sound established manhaj and methodology of the Sahaba. And his house is always open. Anyone who wants to come and visit him, go and sit. You want to sit in his dars? The doors open. You want to come and learn and study? Whether you agree with him or whether you oppose him, you go and sit. He will not stop you. Hafidhullah, he will not stop you. For this reason, his knowledge-based publications and writings and speech are distinguished with great focus and emphasis upon tawheed, sunnah, shirk, bid'ah, refutation of those who oppose the kitab and the sunnah. Many of his works are like this. So if we stop there for a moment and take account and ponder over the one who is blindfolded and not prepared to look, you're not prepared to ponder at this man, this man who has studied with the greatest of the ulama of the ummah, studied with Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, Ibn Uthaymeen, Al-Albani, Muhammad Amin Shinqiti, all of these ulama, Al-Mubarak Furi, all of these ulama praising him and praising him and praising him. Warning against those who speak ill of Sheikh Rabia. So if this is the case with Sheikh Rabia, then who is the one who is now going to come from the, from the ignoramus people of bid'ah and misguidance who is going to say don't sit with Sheikh Rabia? So we say to the one, be careful of those who say to you, in Tebi, be careful of Sheikh Rabia. No, rather you should be careful of the one who utters those words. Those who say don't listen to Rabia. Right? And the one who fills his ears with all of this falsehood against Sheikh Rabia, that he circulates this speech against his peers and amongst his own people, not even knowing what he's uttering. I heard that Fulan said, that Fulan said, that Fulan said, keep away from Sheikh Rabia. This is what they used to do with the prophets. This is what they used to do with the ulama of old. They used to do that. In brief, I'm going to mention in the last 10 minutes or so, some of the statements that will make you understand who Sheikh Rabi is. Statements of the ulama. The great imam, the allama, Ubaidullah al-Rahmani al-Mubarak Furi. This muhaddith from the well-known muhaddithin of India, of Hind, died in the year 1414. The author of the explanation of Mishkat al-Masabih. He said about Sheikh Rabia, he said, our brother for the sake of Allah, the noble alim, the excellent, the virtuous, the honorable, Sheikh Rabia bin Hadi Umair al-Madkhali, from the village of Al-Jaradiyya, from the suburbs of Samita, in the southern, southern part of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He is a lecturer in the department of Hadith in the Islamic University of Medina. He has requested from me ijaza. He has requested from me ijaza, permission, with a chain of narration to narrate the prophetic hadith from me. An isnad that he wants, that he has taken, that reaches the imams of hadith themselves, such as the compilers of the two sahihs and other than them. So, what has Sheikh Rabi got? A chain of narration through Imam al Mubarak Furi, from his Sheikh, from his Sheikh, all the way back to Imam al Bukhari. From Imam al Bukhari, the chains of narration that go back to the Prophet. Sheikh Rabi has an isnad going all the way back to the Prophet through Ahlul Hadith, not through the isnad of the Sufiya. Who gained their isnad through dreams. I had a dream that I met Angel Jibreel. And he connected me to Abu Bakr. Who connected me. So I've got isnad to the Prophet. No, ya ikhwan. This is an ijazah from the Prophet. From. Or for Sheikh Rabi. Through Al-Mubarak Furi. Through his teachers. Generation after. Remember what I mentioned at the beginning. The names of those scholars. Generation after generation. Up until our times. All the way back to the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he said, Ubaidullah al-Rahmani al-Mubarak Furi. He said, indeed I found Sheikh Rabia to be one possessing abundant knowledge and great virtue. He is a possessor 
of sound understanding. He is upright, steadfast upon istiqama. He has an upright disposition. He is upon the path of the Salafus Salih in aqidah and action. A follower of the book and sunnah. An aider and defender of the book and the sunnah. He is mutashaddid upon Ahlul Bid'ah and Hawa. He is what? Mutashaddid. Just like Nu'aym bin Hammad was in his time. Rahimahullah. The one who was executed because of his adherence to the Aqeedah died in the year 239 after the Hijrah. He is mutashaddid. Meaning that he is stern and harsh. Mubarak Furi said against the people of Bid'ah and the people of Desires. He is a refuter of the blind followers. Now when Imam Mubarak Furi mentions that he is stern and harsh against Ahlul Bid'ah, is he criticizing Sheikh Rabi or praising Sheikh Rabi? I'm asking you, Ikhwan. Praising him. Just like Sabuni used to say that the Salafs of this Ummah, they used to hate Ahlul Bid'ah. And they used to be stern against them and harsh against them. So this is Sheikh Rabi. In that regard, he's following the madhab of the Salaf. So this is Sheikh Rabi, the great Imam, the Allama, the Mujaddid, the Muhaddith of the era, Muhammad Nasiruddin Al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, without any doubt, and we praise Allah the mighty and majestic, that he has made workers for this righteous da'wah that is established upon the book and the sunnah and the manhaj of the salaf. There is a number of callers in, in the different Islamic lands who are fulfilling this universal obligation, Fard Kifaya, which is established by a few in the Islamic world today. So it has fallen upon these two sheikhs also. The two sheikhs, Sheikh Rabia and Sheikh Muqbil. Two callers, Sheikh Al-Albani mentioned, two callers to the book and the sunnah. And that which the Salaf of Salih were upon. And waging war upon those who oppose this manhaj, as sahih this correct methodology. It is not hidden from all and sundry that whomsoever speaks against either of these two men. Which two men? Sheikh Rabia and Sheikh Muqbil. Whomsoever criticizes them and speaks ill of them, then either he is jahil, he is ignorant, or secondly, that he is sahib hawa. He is a person of desires. So those who criticize these two sheikhs, as we have said, either he is an ignoramus, so he is taught, or he is a person of hawa and desires, so Allah is, Allah's aid is sought from his evil. So then Sheikh Al-Albani continues, so we request from Allah the mighty and majestic, that either he guides such a person, or otherwise he breaks his back. Whose speech? Sheikh Al-Albani. Mutashaddid. Shidda. Yumkin, ya ikhwan. Maybe he's, Sheikh Al-Albani is being too harsh. No, it is Rabi who is harsh, huh? Not Al-Albani. These are not harsh words, ya ikhwan. If you speak against two men in this era, Sheikh Muqbil and Sheikh Rabia, may Allah guide you or break your back. These are strong words, ya ikhwan. Showing that your, your adherence to the sunnah and your sign of adherence to the sunnah is love of these two men and not speaking ill of them. And not speaking ill of them. Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, rahimahullah ta'ala, the noble Sheikh, the Allama, the Imam, Sheikh al-Islam, Abdul Aziz bin Abdullah ibn Baz, he mentions in his tape, as for the reference for the words of Sheikh al-Albani, rahimahullah, then it is a cassette recording of Silsilatul Huda Wan Noor, tape number 851, stroke one. Questions by Abu Hassan, Mustafa bin Ismail to Allama Al Albani in the year 1416. This person, by the way, who put these questions to Sheikh Al Albani and Sheikh Al Albani answered them, later started attacking Sheikh Rabia. You ask the question, then you oppose. The answer that you got from Sheikh Al-Albani, this is Abu Hassan Al-Ma'rabi, who put these questions to Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah. And look at the answer of Al-Albani. That's the dua of Al-Albani upon you, Abu Hassan. Look at the dua of Al-Albani. Either you are ignorant, 
or you are sahib hawa. If you are a person of hawa, may Allah guide you or may Allah break your back. That's the dua of Al-Albani against you and those similar to you, Abu Hassan and Abu Usama, Khalifa from Green Lane and whoever else is upon their madhab. Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, he said, in a tape entitled al Asilatu Suwaidiyya, when he was asked about Sheikh Rabia and Sheikh Muhammad Aman al-Jami, Muhammad, al- uh, Muhammad Aman al-Jami, from the great scholars of Medina of that era, about 25 odd years ago. That he was asked about Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi and Muhammad Aman. So he said, Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, he said, in particular, the two companions, al fadila to Sheikh Muhammad Aman al-Jami, and Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali, both of them are from Ahlul Sunnah. Both of them are known for knowledge, excellence and sound aqeedah. I advise that their books be benefited from. He said in another cassette, which is entitled Thana'ul Ulama, ala, ala Sheikh Rabi, that has been published by Minhaj al-Sunnah, that Sheikh, that Sheikh bin Baz said, recorded, Sheikh Rabi is from the best of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. It is well known that he is from Ahlul Sunnah. And his books and his articles are well known. Also, Abu Abdullah al-Madani stated in the book Thana'ul Badia that has been recorded from him that Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Bazi said from the trustworthy that, that this is what Abu Abdullah al-Madani said from the trustworthiness that Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz had for Sheikh Rabia is that he would ask him concerning certain individuals. Sheikh bin Baz would ask Sheikh Rabia tell me about so and so and so and so what's your opinion? He would ask him about certain individuals and their manahij and their methodologies. And he would even write to Sheikh Rabia, saying to Sheikh Rabi, research for me about this man and tell me what you think. Sheikh Khalid al-Dhufayri, Hafizullah, from the students of Sheikh Rabi, has actual copies of those letters from Sheikh bin Baz sent to Sheikh Rabia. And there are photocopies that are available even now upon the internet. Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz also stated, as has been mentioned by Ahmed Bazmul, Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul in Siyanat al-Salafi and also in An-Nakulat al-Salafiyya fi al-Rad ala ta'ifat al-Haddadiyya page 51 that Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz said O Sheikh Rabi' refute anyone who errs even if bin Baz errs refute him who said that? Sheikh bin Baz to Sheikh Rabi' even if I err then respond to me even if my Sheikh, Muhammad bin Ibrahim, the Mufti of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia before bin Baz, even if he errs, you Sheikh Rabi, respond to him as well. This is the trust, the thiqa, that those scholars had for Sheikh Rabi. Sheikh Ahmed, Sheikh Abdullah al-Ahmari, he said, as Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul mentions, that I asked Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz 14 years ago, I asked Sheikh bin Baz 14 years ago. I said to him, Sheikh Rabi criticizes this one. And Sheikh Rabi criticizes that one. And Sheikh Rabi criticizes the du'at, the callers to Allah. He said, Sheikh bin Baz, look, Sheikh bin Baz gazed to, even though Sheikh bin Baz was blind, but Sheikh bin Baz turned towards me, rahimahullah, and he said to him, Ittaqillah. He said, fear Allah. For indeed, Sheikh Rabi' is an imam of the sunnah. Whose words? Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz. Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah, in another one of his sayings, he said in a dars that is recorded and entitled Al-Mawazanat Bid'atul Asr. That Al-Mawazanat is the innovation of this era. Mawazanat, by the way, this bid'ah that Abu Usama and those with him are drowned in this, this bid'ah of al-muazanat. Drowned in this innovation. Sheikh al-Albani, after refuting this bid'ah of al-muazanat, meaning praising the innovators, as well as dispraising them. Meaning, that you start mentioning, oh, but he did such and such good, he did such... Sheikh al-Albani said, no, you don't praise the innovators. Whatever good that they did, we're not concerned with that. We want to warn the ummah from him. So we don't praise the innovators. Then at the end of this tape, 
he mentioned Sheikh Al-Albani. Sheikh Al-Albani says, بالاختصار, in summary, I say, أنا, uh, uh, أقول, indeed, the carrier of the flag of Al-Jarh wa Ta'adil al that in this, today, the one who carries the flag of Jarh wa Ta'adil, meaning the disparagement and the praise of individuals, the one who carries this science and this flag in this time, who was it in previous times? Do you know, ya akhwan? The likes of Ibn Hajar, the likes of Al-Zahabi, the likes of Al-Mizzi, and that's from the Middle Era, Ibn Taymiyyah and other than them. From the early era, we are talking of the likes of Ahmed bin Hanbal, Yahya bin Ma'in, these ulama, Abu, Hat, Ibn Abi, Abu Hatim al-Razi, Abu Zur'a, they were the flag bearers of Jarh wa Ta'adil in their era. Sheikh Al-Albani, who is also an imam of Jahwa Ta'adil, make no mistakes, Sheikh Al-Albani is an imam of Jahwa Ta'adil of this era. He is the teacher of Sheikh Rabia. So this is now the teacher saying that you, Rabia, are the carrier of the flag of this science in our era. He said, indeed the carrier of the flag of al Jahwa Ta'adil of this era, in the present era, in truth, it is our brother, Dr. Rabia. And those who refute him, do not ever refute him based upon knowledge. Rather, the knowledge is with him. The knowledge is with who? Is with him. Those who oppose Sheikh Rabia, the knowledge is not with them. The knowledge is with him. And in another place, Sheikh Rabia said, rather what they refute upon is batil. Sheikh Al-Albani said what they refute him upon is batil. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala, in numerous cassettes and numerous sayings, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin used to defend Sheikh Rabi' strongly, ya ikhwan. He used to say to the extent that those people with a disease in their hearts, with hypocrisy with them, and they just spread rumors and attacks against the ulama, they speak against Sheikh Rabi'ah. So this is why Sheikh Rabi is before you today, next to me. This is Ibn Uthaymeen. When they came to Sheikh Rabi, asking him, or when they came to Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, asking about Sheikh Rabi, he said, you ask me about, about Rabi? He said, I will say to you what Ahmed bin Hanbal said when they came to him, asking him about Ishaq bin Rahawai. Do not ask me about Ishaq. Go and ask Ishaq about me. What Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen saying? Don't ask me about Sheikh Rabi'i, whether he's good or bad. Go and ask him about me. Of course, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen is from the fuqaha, from the ulama, from the a'imma, who Sheikh Rabi'i looks up to as from the great scholars of this era. But look at this great teacher, Ibn Uthaymeen, what he says about Sheikh Rabi'i. What he says about Sheikh Rabi'i. But Ahlul Bid'a, they will take a kalima of Sheikh Al-Albani. You know what Sheikh Al-Albani said about Sheikh Rabi'a? He said, however, he said, I have advised Sheikh Rabi'a. Right? Now, what did Sheikh Al-Albani just say? That he is an imam, the Hamilul Raya, meaning the flag bearer of the science of Jahwa Ta'adil. That he refutes them. And those that refute him, they do not do so on knowledge. Rather, the knowledge is with Sheikh Rabi'a. Whomsoever speaks against Sheikh Rabi and Sheikh Muqbil, may Allah guide them or what? Break his back. Alright? You don't ever hear those Mubtadi'a and Ahlul Bida quoting that from Sheikh Al-Albani. You don't hear them quoting from Sheikh Bin Baz. When they asked Sheikh Bin Baz, they said, Yeah, Sheikh, what do you say about Sayyid Qutb? He said, Ask him. Ask who? Ask Rabi, ask Sheikh Rabi about Sayyid Qutb. He knows him better than I do. When they asked him, he said, I don't know too much about him. But I know that he was a writer. And his tafsir is not to be relied upon. But I know that Sheikh Rabi has written against him. So read his book. Who? Bin Baz. And others as well. Sheikh Rabi, ya ikhwan. But however, Sheikh Al-Albani, he said, in one of his sayings, after praising Sheikh Rabi and praising Sheikh Rabi and mentioning his good and mentioning his khair, Sheikh Al-Albani said, however, I have advised him on more than one occasion. 
advised who? Al Almani, the teacher advising his student. Like a father advising his son. An Imam advising another Imam, but one is greater, Al Almani is greater. But advising another Imam, Sheikh Rabia. And this is normal. This is normal, Ya Ikhwan. Advice between the ulama is normal. Bin Baz used to advise Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. So now Al Albani said, I have advised him, I have advised him. And he mentioned that one occasion, that I advised him on more than one occasion, that if only he was gentler. He was a bit gentle. In the, in the manner, in his manner, and it would, befit, it would benefit more people if he was slightly more gentle, if he was gentler. Whether it be with those who are with him or those who are against him, that if he was gentler, that would be better. But as from the aspect of knowledge, there is no avenue whatsoever to criticize the man. Look, even then he finishes off by saying, from the avenue of knowledge, from the aspect of knowledge, there is no avenue to criticize the rajul. He mentions the rajul. Why? Because Sheikh Rabi is a rajul, ya akhwan. He's a man. He's not, we're not talking about a boy changes his mind from one day to another. A rajul. He said, from the aspect of avenue of knowledge, there is no, no avenue that they have towards him. So what did they do? I remember. Now a group of people of Hawa and Hizbiya, they spread it across the dunya. They left everything. Wallahi, I remember in the 90s, mid 90s, they spread, ev- they left everything. They said, Sheikh Al-Albani has criticized Sheikh Rabia. He said that he's too hard. Why? Because Sheikh Al-Albani said that I said to him that you should not be so mutashaddit. You should not be so harsh. So they spread it everywhere. Even now in their lectures, like Ali Al-Halabi, this Mubtadi, when he gave a lecture once he said, MashaAllah Sheikh Rabi, he's okay. But like our Sheikh said, he's too harsh. He's mutashaddit. Or sometimes, and on an occasion, didn't even mention Sheikh Rabi's name. He said, those people who speak, and they refute this one and they refute that one. Our sheikh used to say that he is mutashaddid. What? Have you got selective memory? Is that all that Sheikh Al-Albani said? But anyway, no problem. The fact is Al-Albani said it. Rahimahullah. This great imam, this muhaddith, he said it. So Sheikh Rabi, this was Sheikh Rabi's response. And I will read it to you. Sheikh Rabi said, Oh brothers, no. I'lam, have knowledge. Having shidda, having harshness towards Ahlul Batil is Mahmuda. Is Mahmuda. It's praiseworthy. Being harsh towards Ahlul Bida is praiseworthy in the view of the Salaf of this Ummah. Read what they have written. Read Aqidatul Salaf, Ashabul Hadith of Sabuni. You think, you think Sheikh Rabi is harsh? You want to read what Sabuni has written, Ya Ikhwan? Go and read Sharh al-Sunnah of al-Barbahari and then tell me harsh. Go and read uh, al-Ibana, Kubra and Sughra of Ibn Batta and then tell me Sheikh Rabi is harsh. So Sheikh Rabi said, my brothers, in the view of the Salaf of this Ummah, being harsh towards Ahlul Bid'ah is praiseworthy. Though, Wallah, you know some of the Salaf, if a person of Bid'ah died and they used to make rows for Janazah behind them, they used to come from far into the janazah and break the rose. Physically come and say, what are you praying over him for? Move from here. And Imma used to do this from the early salaf. One of them, and I've mentioned to you this before, one of them went to the janazah, no one from Ahlul Sunnah, no imam, no scholar from Ahlul Sunnah prayed behind this innovator Bishr al-Marisi. Except one man from Ahlul Sunnah. When he came back, they grabbed him. And they started telling him off. And being harsh towards him. For what? For praying a janazah of this person? He said, before you attack me, let me tell you. Let me tell you what I did. Yes, I stood. Whilst they were making dua for him, and the janazah, I was making dua against him. Oh Allah! This servant of yours used to deny the punishment of the grave. Punish him in his grave with a punishment that you have never given to anybody else. Look how the Salaf were. Oh Allah, this servant of yours used to deny the Mizan, 
the weighing of the deeds, Yom al Qiyamah. Oh Allah, make his scale of good deeds light and make his scale of wicked and evil deeds heavy. Oh Allah, he used to deny the ru'ya that you will be seen Yom al Qiyamah. Oh Allah, do not let him see you. This is what the Salaf used to do at the janazah of the Mubtadi'ah. They never used to attend, but this one he attended because he wanted Allah to hear the dua. He wanted to make dua against this Mubtadi'ah. So Shaykh Rabi mentions being harsh towards the people of Bid'ah with the Salaf was praiseworthy. And those who had this severity towards them are considered to be praiseworthy. They are considered to be people who, have, who are to be extolled and praised, such as Hamad ibn Salama, Abu Ishaq al-Fazari, and others. As for in these times, Shaykh Rabi said, the affairs, they have changed. The affairs have changed. Ahlul Bid'ah and the Hizbiyoon. From them, Al-Ikhwan al-Muslimoon, Al-Qutubiyoon, the followers of Sayyid Qutub, alongside the fact that they, Ahlul Bid'ah, are the most mutashaddidun in their judgments upon the ummah. That they are most, they are, that first of all, having shidda and having harshness towards Ahlul Bid'ah, that it is, that it is something praiseworthy. But in reality, it is them who are harsh and stern, not us. They are the ones who pass judgments upon the ummah, its individuals and, its, and the jama'at. They declare the rulers to be kuffar. Is that not mutashaddid? Is that not harsh? And they make and they declare enmity towards the Salafis. So they, Ahlul Bid'ah, they are the ones who are mutashaddidun against the Salafis. More and more, they ascribe lies and falsehood to those who follow the truth, Ahlul Sunnah. And some of Ahlul Sunnah, Shaykh Rabi mentions, have been affected by the ideas and the means of these deviants. Some of Ahlul Sunnah, they have been affected. So they begin to describe Sheikh Rabi' with harshness in his mannerism. So they also, when they see me being harsh towards Ahlul Bid'ah, and this is something the Salaf used to do. So because the prevalence of today, that we are not harsh, rather harshness is left towards them, so they declare the rulers to be kuffar and so on. So they begin to describe Sheikh Rabi' with harshness in his manners, in his mannerism, in his uslub. So the people of desires took advantage of the saying. This is Sheikh Rabi talking. So the people of Hawa, they took advantage of the saying of the Muhaddith al-Kabir, the great scholar of Hadith, the well-known famous Salafi, our Sheikh al-Albani rahimahullah, whom we venerate and we honor and we consider him to be from the great Mujaddideen of al-Islam, the great revivers of Islam in our times. So Ahlul Ahwa took advantage of that saying that the manners of Sheikh Rabi, in the manners of Sheikh Rabi, there is harshness. So when, so Sheikh Rabi is saying that when Sheikh Al-Albani said that, these people of desires, they took advantage of that. They took advantage of that. And what did they do? He mentions, Sheikh Rabi, that Sheikh Al-Albani, he said this after praising Rabi. He praised the manhaj of Rabi. He described Rabi as being the carrier of the flag of Jahwa Ta'adil. And that he is upon the Salafi Manhaj. And they are not to be found with him any mistakes. But Ahlul Ahwa act as if they are ignorant of, these truthful, of this truthful statement. And they focus upon the description of harshness that was made towards me. To sow, to sow into the minds of the people. And especially in the minds of the Salafis. That Shaykh Rabi is mutashaddid. And they attained that which they wanted. He said, from the statement of Al-Albani, they got what they wanted. Shaykh Rabi said, unfortunately. So he said, this plot of Ahlul, Ahlul Ahwa, this plot of the people of desires reached me. So I picked up the phone and I phoned Shaykh Al-Albani. I phoned him. So this is the way of the scholars. Sheikh Al-Albani gave a piece of advice. So now Sheikh Rabi picked up the phone and wanted to speak to Al-Albani about this affair. So he said, I phoned Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah. 
And I criticized these words that have been made against me. And I advised him. And I reproached him gently concerning these words of his. And he accepted that from me. With words that are well known and widespread. Sheikh Al-Albani accepted it from me. And he said, Sheikh Al-Albani, he sought pardon. He sought pardon from me. And he said that these words that I uttered, they were only words from a, from a certain point of view, Sheikh Al-Albani said. And then he criticized, Sheikh Al-Albani himself criticized those initial words and with more emphasis when I wrote to him. Because then Sheikh Rabi wrote to him. And especially regarding the book, when I wrote the book, Al-Awasim, Mimma fi Qutub Sayyid Qutub min al-Qawasim. This is a refutation of Sayyid Qutub that Sheikh Al-Albani wrote. And he said, and then in the end, Sheikh Al-Albani regretted. Sheikh Al-Albani regret, regretted what he, what he used to hold regarding the scholars of Medina. And Sheikh Al-Albani, that he retracted from that. That he, that he used to say that they have something of harshness, the scholars of Medina. When it became clear to Sheikh Al-Albani, the deviations of particular individuals that were hidden from him. And at the head of them, Safar al-Hawali and Salman al-Awda, these two people of Bid'ah, that Shaykh al-Albani, eventually he criticized them and declared them to be the Khawarij of the era. So, Dina were mutashaddidun, that they were harsh. And when it was made clear to us what they are upon, that which they are upon of truth, then we change. Or that we, as he mentioned, Shaykh al-Albani said, and as for us, that, uh, uh, and, and then it became clear to us what they were upon by way of the truth. And as for us, we did not know about the reality of these people. Who? The Hizbis. Those Khawarij. And then Sheikh, then Sheikh Rabi concludes by saying, and I say our argument is that they are the ones who are harsh in their falsehood and in their judgments of kufr upon societies and upon the rulers, and especially more so upon the rulers who are upon the kitab and the sunnah. They are harsh upon the scholars of the Salafi manhaj. Who? Those people of bid'ah. The likes of Abdul Rahman Abdul Khaliq. The likes of Safar al-Hawali, Salman al awda And you have their equivalents in the West. Abu Usama, Abu Muslima, Sayyid, uh, what's his name? Sayyid Raghi. These types of individuals who are upon that same methodology of the likes of whom Sheikh Rabi has criticized and Sheikh Al-Albani criticized. So Sheikh Rabi mentions, they are the ones who are harsh upon the scholars of the Salafi Manhaj, accusing them of being spies and government stooges. And they even accuse the scholars of being stooges of the Jews and the Americans and other such oppressive insults and judgments. Isn't that, aren't they the ones who are mutashaddid? Look what they're saying about the Salafi scholars. Why do you remain silent about that? About Usama. Why do you remain silent about that? The likes of Safar and Salman. And all of these people of Bid'ah. Then Sheikh Rabi mentions. As for us. By the way the words of Sheikh Rabi finished. When he said. And even the stooges. That they accused the scholars of being stooges of the Jews and the Americans. And other such insults. And oppressive insults and judgments. Then Sheikh Rabi mentions. As for us. We work with the Haq. There is not to be found with us that which they accuse us of from Shiddah. So we, for example, refute the insults of Sayyid Qutb that he made upon the Sahaba. When he accused some of them of hypocrisy, of nifaq, and kadib, and khiyana, Sayyid Qutb accused many of the Sahaba. He accused, for example, Amr ibn al-As, and Uthman bin Affan, and other than them. And some of the other Sahaba, he accused them of hypocrisy. And lying and treachery. So we argued these affairs with Sayyid Qutb. But we did not say to him, you are a munafiq. We did not say to Sayyid Qutb that you are a kadhab. Or that you are khain, treacherous. And likewise, what of the attacks of Sayyid Qutb? Upon the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. So we did not insult him. Meaning Sayyid Qutb with the word that he insulted this noble Prophet with. And likewise, when he declared... All of the Islamic societies have been kuffar. 
But we did not say to him, you are a kafir. So where is our shidda that you claim that we have? Rather, our shidda, our harshness is in accordance to the sunnah. Our harshness is in accordance to the sunnah. In accordance to Abu Bakr and Umar and the early salaf of this ummah. So Sheikh Rabi' wrote these words and I finished at the point when he said, but we did not say to Sayyid Qutb that you are a kafir, even though he himself declared the Muslims to be kuffar. He declared the rulers to be kuffar. He declared the Sahaba radiallahu anhum to be liars and hypocrites. This is Sayyid Qutb. But we did not say to Sayyid Qutb that you are this and you are that. We said, well, you are wrong and you have innovated, you have made inhiraf. So where is the shidda in that, in clarification of the truth? This is Sheikh Rabia. Now you understand why they hate him. Because the man will not be quiet. When he sees deviation, he will not stay quiet, ya ikhwan. Like Ahmed bin Hanbal, Ibn Taymiyyah, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab before him. Same as their way. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our Shaykh, Shaykh Rabia and his brothers from Ahlul Sunnah. Keep them steadfast upon the Sunnah. Make us like them and make us like those early Salaf who are firm upon the Haqq, firm upon Istiqama, harsh against the people of Bid'ah, gentle with the believers. Barakallahu feekum wa subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk.